he seeks out uh, these kind of crises. He seeks out opportunities to, um, you know, insert himself. I think, you know, both because like he is a kind of like instinctive marketer, and and so you know, if whether we're talking about you know the the water crisis in Flint, Michigan, which he had you know promised to fix, or wildfires years ago, or uh, the the uh, cave, the 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 oh, Thai yeah. cave thing. Yeah. You know, he he. This is kind of what he does. Um, so that's one thing. As Joel says, he is um, marketing to some extent Starlink as a potential like defense technology mm-hmm. as as something that goes beyond just like a way for you to get the internet in a rural area, but maybe something that's going to be sold uh, to governments. And of course, he is trying to use this trip and, and acknowledged on, on, on X uh, earlier today that he's trying to use this trip to sort of combat uh, or do damage control, I suppose, uh, from from the uh, the endorsement of you know an anti-Semitic uh, conspiracy theory uh, that happened a couple of weeks ago that has led to massive uh, pullback from advertisers and and sort of lots of back and forth with Elon Musk, who has I should say uh, denied uh, being an anti-Semite and has said this is all just a, a you know media conspiracy and and but he and did it. He he made the comment and and he's attempting to essentially say. That well, you know, I'm pro-Israel, so how could I, you know, I've, I've taken the time to to fly, you know, halfway around the world. How could I? How could how could somebody who does that be an anti-Semite? Um, of course, um, the concern from advertisers, you know, I, I think anytime you see a you know a potentially violent conspiracy theory amplified, like that's upsetting. But also the concern is seeing their ads next to this stuff, right? And yeah. that's something that arguably. Totally. X hasn't done that much to fix yet. They are suing Media Matters, so they're so they're taking this fight to court, but it's not clear that they've actually changed their approach in any way. Which I think, you know, that Max brings up the numbers and you know, when this first happened and the uh, episode that we put in motion for it, um, we you'd seen a trickle of, of in pause and spending. But boy, that is that number gets bigger and bigger now on X, and the the companies involved have only gotten bigger, yeah. and the brand risk is just like why why bother, right? Yeah, well, and it's a lot easier to say Lindy Ocarino, and There's this interesting tension between Musk, who's out there kind of mixing it up with these like far right figures in his own personal social media handle, and then Lindy Ocarino, the CEO of X, acting like. Like the like a normal media company CEO saying, "Hey, you know, we're we're working really hard to uh, combat hate speech, and by the way, we've got some excellent opportunities. And hey, have you checked out the NFL? Sports is really big on X. <laughs> you know, she's she's doing the things you'd sort of expect a media executive to do, and in certain ways, being undermined by the owner who is, you know, just on his own, kind of like amplifying theories, tweeting." sort of seemingly crazy stuff and, and just making it all the harder for her to convince uh, advertisers that this is a great place to like sell pharmaceuticals or market your Black Friday discounts or whatever. Well, Max, how do we separate and can we separate Elon from Starlink, from X, from Tesla? I mean, r- there is no separation. I mean, that's and that's what's unique about him. It's that, you know, he runs these companies, even though they are nominally separate, even though, you know, Tesla is a public company. Uh, that space, has a board. Yeah, has a board. SpaceX is a privately held company with a lot of outside, a lot of big time outside investors, um, you know. X, you know, formerly known as Twitter, has these uh, has these lenders who are, who are obviously you know interested third parties, um, but he kind of likes to blur the lines. I mean, you see executives kind of bounce from one company to the next. You have him talking all the time about the way these companies you know kind of enhance one another. So it's like it's very hard, and 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 when it's working well, it becomes this amazing advantage. You think back a couple of years ago when SpaceX launched a Tesla Roadster into space, right? Just an amazing marketing stunt that. Kind Kind of it sort of highlights how forward-looking Tesla is, and gives SpaceX, I guess, something to, to you know send it to orbit or what, send it to, into the into outer space. Um, but when it's not working, when you have these kind of crises, and then the, and they can kind of like blow back on other businesses. And and what we're seeing with with SpaceX with Starlink is Musk trying to find you know essentially a new revenue stream 